Well, greetings and welcome to our weekly educational round here at Seclair. My name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist here at Seclair. And today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. And on my right would be... Mike Sorg. I'm the uh, web director here at uh, Seclair. And on my left... I'm Jake Kaufman, a PA student from Chatham University. And here at Seclair, what we attempt to do is become also not only a treatment facility, but also an educational facility where we do have uh, counseling interns, we have physician's assistants, uh, students on their psychiatric rotation, and even various people that come in and, uh, and shadow us during the week. And one of the commonalities that we all share is the advancing and entrenched technology that we all seem to have to uh, deal with today. So the idea is that uh, not everything out there is safe, not not everything's a, not everybody's out there is riding a unicorn. No, it isn't, especially on the internet. Um, you can find the unicorns on the internet, um, but yeah, sometimes they're very, very angry unicorns. Absolutely, and I and in the technology age has spawned a whole new uh, genre of vocabulary. Also, <laughs> uh, when you were talking to me, when the people used to talk to me about trolling, I would think of Billy Goat Gruff mm -hmm. and a troll that lived under the bridge. However, uh, in today's language, I understand troll has a different meaning. Right, right. Trolling um, is is it's not a new term. Um, it's definitely become more of the vocabulary of the everyday online user. Um, I guess um, it's the direct correlation I can give it is uh, kind of bullying. It's online bullying. And I think it's made even worse in a lot of cases because it's anonymous. And, and it's hard to shut these bullies down. I mean, it's so one thing going to the teacher and saying, hey, I'm being bullied. Um, the bully doesn't have a face. You know, the bully has, has, has a username that can be hidden and re, uh, relaunched if he's been kicked out of the group or, or, or whatever it is, or Facebook or something like that. Um, according to Wikipedia, uh, the uh, internet slang, you know, place to be, uh, it is internet slang. A troll is a person who sows discord on the internet by starting arguments or upsetting people by posting inflammatory extraneous or off-topic messages in an online community such as a news group forum chat room or blog and this extends to facebook twitter google plus what a uh, snapchat i guess i guess that'd be a little harder there um but you know that sort of situation and um i, I think this is very <sighs> I think it is, it is a very big topic to talk about. Um, I don't want to get into the details of it because I'm still, you know, kind of collecting everything going on. But Gamergate, some of the harassment for, in that case, uh, uh, female developers and uh, 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 journalists in the video game industry. Uh, just look up uh, hashtag Gamergate on Twitter or watch your safe search maybe in some of the comments, though, um, if you want to find out what that's about. But um, also, I have really been amazed at... Uh, just, you know, my, my nephew just graduated high school uh, last year and, um, you know, following some of the threads on Facebook and seeing the stuff, like the, 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 the pressures of high school that d extend beyond when that bell rings at the end of the day. And now it, it, it touches you everywhere. There's no reprieve. I remember being able to go home and, well, I'm safe here, you know. Uh, nobody's going to call me on the phone and tell me how much I, 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 I'm, I'm horrible for whatever reason. But now we have all these new communications and now so many ways for people to do it anonymously. And, and there's not much we can do individually, I think, to stop trolling. But it's more of a society thing. But in the meantime, we can sort of learn how to deal with the fact that it's happening and what to do in those cases. And I think that's where a lot of the techniques at Seclair uh, can kind of help out with that. Well, and again, coming from the age where uh, people generally used uh, telegraph for smoke signals, uh, could you share a little bit about uh, what you have found out about trolling on the internet, Jake? So I'm under, under the impression that trolling is just kind of, for instance, on YouTube, someone will leave a comment to kind of instigate uh, mm -hmm. an argument with someone, either disagreeing with the statement of the video posted or just yeah, finding a user and hating their comment or trying to get an argument going and then it's kind of a snowball effect where others will be like just for fun I guess they just start arguing against this person trying to mm -hmm. engage this person in a debate and then they find out who this person is and just right. send mean hateful things and right. just uh, and, continues and from there I've been I've been involved uh, victimized a little bit in some of these uh, communities you know for some of some of the work I do I'm a very public facing person doing my video and you know online um and and sometimes they'll just 
anonymously attack, you know, we're like, you know, they'll say something about, say, this video production. And I'm like, well, actually, this is because of this, this, and this. And then they just, like, uh, attack my weight or my wife or something like that. You know, something that has no, nothing to do with anything. You know, that's not their agenda to have a conversation. It's, it's to attack, to make, make the person look bad, feel bad, you know, whatever the case, the case may be. And, and I think that anonymity is, is the biggest... Uh, I want to say it stokes the fires a little bit, but it, it's 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 the reason I think we see more. You know, some people's true nature come out when you, it's not the, the consequent consequence of attaching a face to it, right? Uh, it just goes away. Well, well, certainly. And then again, I want everyone out there to understand that they they do have choices, of course, whether to participate in this nonsense or not, right? Uh, and sometimes you feel, Jake, that you have to respond. When you were little, when you were on the playground and somebody pushed you, what, what, what is your natural tendency? Uh, it's pushing back. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the idea here at Seclair is, first of all, we want to use a little bit of mindfulness and examine wh whose voice is that? What voice, what voice is saying these mean and hateful things uh, necessarily to me? Um, and quite often, Mike, what we have to understand that somebody who's projecting an image of strength and and meanness means that they're they're not strong on the inside, Mike. Right. Right. Exactly. And that some of a lot of these hateful comments that bullies say to other people are really, Jake, they're things that they think about themselves, and they're projecting them. They're projecting them out. They're projecting them out, and of course, uh, bullying has been around since since the dawn of time. Uh, the perceived strong ones always seem to concentrate on the weak. However, uh, and you folks are much more familiar with this social media than I am. This has opened up a world of new possibilities for for the bullies. Mm -hmm. It's it's a new platform for bullying, you could say, um, and they see a lot of much like a lot of entrepreneurs and, and media makers are, are finding opportunities in social media. Do, so do the uh, so do the, the 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 rousers in the group, I guess. You know the 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 the, the ones that want to start fights, the ones that want to like are more entertained by this. And, and that's the other thing in a lot of the conversation about trolls is um, the people engaging in this. Um, this is their way of, of, of getting their, like, they're addicted to it, I think, a little bit. Like, it's their way of, of just making their lives feel a little more meaningful. They're, they're lashing out in a, in a way that won't affect them otherwise, you know, as opposed to belittling somebody at work or something, right? Um, and, uh, and, and, and I think, you know, that, that, that's, that they've just really jumped on that opportunity. Well, before I get into what uh, what we can possibly do and what you can do to protect yourself, uh, Jake, how, let me ask you this: How plugged in are you? Um, well, I have a Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook, pretty much the standard social media that most kids in my demographic have. Um, and just to, before, just kind of a little intro of how to stop it, there's nothing you can really stop. I mean, you can try and block the person or maybe not respond, but even if you block that person, um, like Mike was saying earlier, they can just make a new account. Right. So even though their first account may be blocked, their second, third, fourth, accounts are still all there. And the unfortunate thing is, and this has been part of the conversation too, is a lot of the, um, a lot of the, responses from a Twitter or Facebook have not kept up with this to, to to be able to say okay we'll be able to do something about this and at what point do we bring in the authorities because sometimes in, in cases like the gamer game and everything there have been uh, people publishing home addresses people doing other things people showing up the interesting places you know and, and stalking harassment has continued to a, a physical level you know um, and there has been involvement with, with authorities um, and, and of course I think it's, it is very you know important to recognize if you feel threatened be sure to contact whatever the platform is um, I don't know where you start with the authorities honestly um, but I you know call your local and be like do you have anything about this you know because there's a lot of jurisdictional issues especially since it's online it could be oh, anywhere. Well, sure well absolutely and uh, 
we have to understand that some people at times make some poor decisions. Of course. And they place themselves in positions or situations that they wouldn't care to have advertised. Mm -hmm. uh, snapshots, photos, uh, comments, uh, being videoed. And quite often some of these things end up on a video, particularly uh, young ladies who would send, let's say, uh, photos that they wouldn't show their parents. Uh, <laughs> And they end up being published all over the internet. And there's been a number of cases, Jake, where a number of these people have chosen to take their lives over over this type of harassment. Yeah, certainly. So let's let's deal with let's deal rather than deal with uh, the problem. Let's talk about the solution. Uh, Jake, if there's an argument and one person doesn't participate, will there be an argument? No, you need two people for that. Indeed, you do. Indeed, mm -hmm. you do. So, Mike. Uh, if you don't pick up the stones and throw them back, uh, sooner or later, someone's going to run out of ammunition. Exactly. Or they're going to be tired. And let me ask you both. Is it really any fun to fight with somebody that doesn't fight back? Nope. No. So here's the idea, and here's where the mindfulness comes in, mm -hmm. where we step back and we become, we become the observer. And we, we look at the situation, hopefully in a in more of a non-judgmental way. We try to identify and label the situation and then choose a wiser mind type of response. Uh, and I understand that when we're attacked, quite often what we do is we take an emotional mind approach. We take we, we react rather than respond. So how many times in your life, Mike, would have would responding rather than reacting kept you out of a lot of problems? Oh, mostly high school. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure. Well, sure. And and again, uh, some of these individuals here certainly are no more uh, closer to maturity than they are to sanity. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So well, the idea is, is for, especially for parents, I know that parents are incredibly concerned about their children's access to all these different types of social media platforms that you were talking about, Jake. Uh, so what, what, what's your thoughts on that, Mike? What can a, what can a parent well, I do? I think um, this has been, well, I'll get a little slightly preachy here, but um, um, I, I, I believe, unfortunately, you know, some, some parents may think, well, you got to cut it off from it. You know, but I think this is the new world that we live in. Um, dealing with social media, uh, they're going to be on Facebook uh, if they're legally able to of age. You know, I think the age is 13, for instance. Um, and it is hard to supervise, but at a certain point, just like uh, you know, the kid going off every day to school, he's got to learn to make his own mistakes. He, she, um, and uh, I think education is the biggest thing. He's learning to deal with it. Um, I know our schools are stretched to the hill as it is but i believe it is education and being a little more straightforward with you know what are the things to watch out for you know the bullying conversation i would hope extend to these platforms that we're seeing with be a star campaigns and everything else going on initiatives like that um i think i think knowing how to compose yourself online should be just as important as learning your manners at the dinner table at this point because it is part of our lives and you're not going to get away from that in, in this world and, and trying to get a job and everything. And it's going to become more pervasive, you know. Um, and uh, that's my take on it, is, is being able to take that and understand it and, um, and know how to deal with it, you know. And, of course, my take is just a little bit removed from, uh, from that, however. Mm -hmm. um, we have a bit of dialectical here. As I, I believe that it's a person's choice to become involved in all these different types of social platforms. True. And my question is, are we losing, are we losing uh, being authentic human beings with each other? Mm -hmm. are, we, are we losing the art of conversation? Are we losing the art of letter writing? Are, are, we, are we losing the art of, of really meaningful human interaction, Jake? To some extent, yeah. Um, especially the letter writing. I don't know when the last time I sent a letter to a friend was. Sure. Sure, it's a, it's, it's, it's a lost art, and uh, well, we can get into that at another day. But I want everyone to understand out there that they have a choice. Do you have to, do you have to be on Twitter today? Do you have to be on Facebook today? Do you have to be on Snapshot today? There are many other things in the creator's world that perhaps you could become a little bit more involved with. Like, let's start with beginning, rather than imaginary relationships with other people perhaps you could begin to start to have an authentic relationship with yourself 
an authentic relationship with who you are. So today I would like everyone to look in the mirror, to look in the mirror and write down honestly what they see. Not the physical things, but write down what write down what they what they see inside themselves. What type of what type of a person are you? What would what would your best friend, what would the, the person who knows you best in the world in a non-judgmental way say about you? What would be what would be your strengths? What would be some of your challenges? And perhaps by again starting this relationship with yourself, uh, you may find it not so necessary to develop and seek approval and and self worth by from what other people on these various social media platforms think of you. Uh, and uh, any any closing comments, Mike? Um, no, no. Um, other than that, if you do decide to be on Facebook and Twitter, <laughs> we are on there, of mm -hmm. course, and we can uh, open the conversation about this and other topics. What do you think about this? Do you have any problems on these platforms? Let us know on the platform you're on. Uh, we're, of course, look up Seclair on Facebook and Google Plus and on Twitter at Seclair Life. And uh, we will respond to you on there and uh, with any questions. And uh, I've been trying to, if you do have any questions, uh, connect you with the practitioners here uh, in Seclair uh, that can help you out with the, with the right answers. Um, you can also uh, uh, check out these videos on YouTube. Seclair Life, or I'm sorry, sorry Seclair, Seclair Video, or just go to Seclair.com uh, for all the posts and all these under Educational Grand Rounds. And you can find this, like I said, on YouTube. And um, please rate us on iTunes. It's really big to help to keep get the word out there. Um, just put a put a star review, put a, you know whatever stars you think it worth. Um, if you want to comment or anything on there as well, that is also very very helpful to the show. Uh, no matter where you're listening or watching, it, those that helps get the word out there on every on many platforms. And we're also on Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. And uh, and please understand that I'm not telling you to stay completely off of these things. Now, you're a medical student, Jake, and a disease is when things get out of balance. Exactly. And when, when this particular type of obsession gets out of balance, we become dysregulated. Mm -hmm. Okay? So what we try to do is, like the Buddha says, we try to find the middle path. We try to find a middle path, and sometimes we need a little bit of assistance with that. So until we until we meet again next uh, Monday, I would like to uh, wish you health, uh, prosperity, and wellness, and a free prescription as usual, fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Perhaps uh, unplug your television, take up fishing, and for a truly mindful experience, uh, try fishing without bait. And I'm going to give you a little teaser. In June, uh, Mike and I will be... Uh, launching a YouTube channel which will be called Fishing Without Bait. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.